In this tutorial, I'm going to talk a bit about the content browser and show you a few tips and tricks with Cinema 4D uh, to basically adapt content to suit your own needs and show you a few bits and bobs really. So uh, stuff like from the brick shader to how you can adapt materials to how you put them onto objects such as houses. So let's get started. What I'm going to work with here is the content browser and to follow along you would need the visualized content. If you haven't got it, it's not the end of the world. Um, but if you go in here, and we'll go to Objects, Buildings, Houses, and I'm going to show you House 16. So, like I said in a previous tutorial, there's lots of content inside Cinema 4D that you can use for your own devices. So, here's one, and it's just a basic building, and this is quite handy when you're trying to get to grips with placing materials onto objects, which is what I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm also going to put a floor in the scene, so that's just this one here, just apply a floor to there. And one of the first things that people struggle with with Cinema 4D or any 3D package is they hit the render button and it just doesn't look very good. It doesn't look very realistic at all, there's not much going on in the scene. And one of the quickest fixes you can do for that is a tool that's built into all of the packages of Cinema 4D called Ambient Occlusion. And you find it in the render settings, so you just go here for render settings and then just go to the effect ambient occlusion leave it on the default to begin with and what that does is when you render it'll look at the scene and apply kind of like a very basic GI setting you know that sort of simulation where you get nice shading in the corners and already it's starting to look a lot nicer so you can see the floor there that looks much nicer than we had before so particularly if I zoom in I'll do that again just so you can see so you get this much nicer, more realistic setting. And that's simulating what you see in real life with indirect lighting, bouncing around. You get these nice shadows in the corners. And of course you can you can tweak ambient occlusion to get less grainy or smoother or whatever you want. I'm not going to go into that, that's just to get you started. Um, so we've got the, the house here, and what we're going to have a look at now is how you can texture one object using several different materials. So this house is made up of one entire object at the minute. So it's all the polygons on one object. And one of the things people often struggle with is, well, how do I you know, put materials on different bits? So obviously with a house we need glass, we need um, the wood or plastic for the window uh, frame. We need something on the, the roof here, some roof tiles or stuff like that. And you know, how do we do it? It's actually pretty simple in Cinema 4D when you know how. So first thing we need is some materials. So we'll go back to the content browser, jump up one, and again, and there's materials. So remember this is really really comes to play if you've got Visualize or Studio, both have the Visualize content. I'll jump into roof tiles, and I'll just grab, let's see, what have we got in here? Roof tiles 02, looks nice. And I'll just pop that in the scene. Now, the trouble is, if I say, let's put that on the object, I drag and drop it onto the object, and you can see I just get this big mess if I hit render. That's really not what I want, and that's because when it's being put on the whole object, if we have a look at the object itself, it's being put on a spherical, and you can try different things. You can try cubic, looks a bit better, but you see we've got tiles going this way out here. It's going over the whole object. They look quite nice, actually, there, quite randomly, but that's quite good and so you're like well how do I control where I put this and the answer is selection tags so what we do for that I'll just get rid of the white original uh, material so we've got our, our roof tiles here and you'll see in the material properties you've got selection and you can use that to create a selection tag it's really easy to do what you do is go to this um, tool here which is the polygon mode tool use your select tool and then select the polygons that you want to be in a selection. So I'm not going to do the whole house, I'm just going to do part of it, but I'm going to say I want that part of the roof as one selection. And then all you do is selection and choose set selection. And then you want to give it a name, so we could say roof one. And then we go to the, ha the original texture here that we placed on the roof tiles 02 and we just tell it what to look at, roof 1. 
and now it's applied just to that. And this is the way you texture the whole house. So we could then have a look at this projection. We've got cubic there. We may want to change that to, for example, flat. And then have a look with the texture tag here, how that's being applied. Um, so there it is there. Just make sure you've activated the house and the tag. And then you'll see the texture tag. Then you can move it up. And then we could rotate it so it kind of matches where the roof is. There we go. And you could switch to a side view to get it spot on, so I'll just do that just for, for practice. There we go. Move it up just so we can see what's going on. And now we know that's correctly applied for that roof. I'll just zoom in a bit so you can see what's going on. And we've got the start of our roofing um, going straight away. So you basically continue that um, method as you go along. But while we're here, just while I remember, there's various different things you can do with textures, uh, one of which is the layer shader, which this one has a, an example of. So if you look at that texture, you see there's this kind of weird, uh, it's almost like dirt, I suppose, or you know, some sort of simulation, and that's using th this particular texture, it's a layered texture. So you can see here it's set up as layer. Um, which you just activate in here. So there's layer. But if you click on it, you can see the, vo the, the various layers. And if you want to add a layer, you can just use any of these to add one. So for example, we could have a shader, we could add a second noise um, layer, or, or any of these really. So where's noise? A simple noise. And that will affect the texture, so you can build up your layers pretty much like you can in a uh, editing program as well, image editing program. And you can get rid of these, you can turn them on and off just like you can uh, and basically tweak the uh, texture as you see fit. And of course you can remove these, so that's up here. And then see what the different effects are. So there's that, that thing that's doing the horrible dirt on there. If you don't want that you could just remove it or turn it off. It's up to you. So right click remove and then my clean so that's one way that you can amend materials, you know, so they're not they're not materials that you, you that you're stuck with. You can edit them, you can change the colors, you can mix things around. So, you know, we could mix the colors on there and all sorts of stuff. Um so it works really nicely the material system. And um, the other one that's a really cool one that's been around for a little while now but takes a little while to get your head around is the brick shader. So if you do create new material uh, new material and then jump into this. You've got um, basically the shader you'll find in here. So you go jump in here, jump into surfaces and find brick. And this is the brick shader. Now the brick shader initially when you put it on it, you're like, hmm, it doesn't look quite right. But when you play around with it, you can get some really nice settings with it. So I'm just going to create a part of this house. So I'll just do a selection like we had before just so you can see the bricks on the house. Oops, got a bit trigger happy there. You can hold down control to get take away from the selection or shift to add to it. Like so. There we go. And of course you can add to this any point later on which I'll show you in a minute. So that's enough to get us started. So we've got a selection there that we want to do so we just go make sure you haven't got your original tag selected um, and then select set selection and then we need to give that a name I'll just cross that off and we'll call that one bricks so that's ready and waiting for our brick texture so we, we set up the basics of the brick texture so we'll bang that on what selection bricks and you can see initially it's horrible because we need to change the projection. So the projection that will probably work well for bricks is cubic. And you can see now we've got this selection working. So one of the things we can see straight away is my selection is not looking the best. I've missed a few bits. So I can grab the house and then select the selection here and then just add to it. So hold down shift. Make sure you've got your select tool added. And oop, I missed. Try that again. Hold down shift and just add 
whatever you want to add to the selection. So we've got that. And then you just go select set selection and that's added to it. And can you see that the bricks then got added to those parts there, which is exactly what we want. So we just do that again. You know, you can just add whatever you want. Um, so we've got these bricks here. So if we hit render, we're starting to get there. Those bricks are okay. They're not too bad. Um, but the really nice thing, like with all the materials, is you can go in and edit this. So if we jump into the, the bricks here, so you just double click on them, you can mess around with everything. So if you don't like this dark second row of bricks, you could get rid of those if you wanted. Um, you could change around with the, the different colors and the gaps. So you can see here's the colors, and it says auto, auto, alt color every n rows. So if I change that to zero, it'll get rid of that. And then you can also have varying brick colors. And basically if you pick two that are quite similar, you can get kind of like what you what what you'd have in real life, where you'd have, you know, every brick doesn't look the same generally in real life. So you need to try and simulate that. So I'm going to go for like yellowy type bricks. Just see what we can get. And you've got two settings really. You can adjust this for. This might take me a little while just to get it looking right. Probably a bit too yellow, so I'll just tone them down. That's probably a bit too orangey. So I'm getting there now. To you know, obviously, if you want the, the colours that I'm getting. Uh, <laughs> yeah, get in there. And you basically just keep going till you, till you find bricks that you like the look of, you know. So that's probably a little too similar now. There we go. So that's starting to look quite nice. You can mess around with the gaps, the dirt, all sorts of things here. Um, we'll just have a look how that's looking. That was sort of the colour I was going for, and hopefully you can see that you're getting these different colours here. You'll also see that if you're using very detailed textures like these bricks that you may want better anti-aliasing because you can see particularly with the mortar or you're seeing your one that you're getting quite um, jaggedy anti-aliasing so you may want to go to your anti-aliasing page and ramp that up to best and perhaps ramp up the max level uh, and then have a look at how smooth that is Whoops. and sometimes you may need to force more than one by one as the minimum because I'm still getting a bit jaggedy there. So I'll jump up to two by two. I'll try that. And of course, the the more anti-aliasing you set up, the um, longer it, it will take to render. Um, but it, it helps you initially get things set up. So we've got the bricks going on there. Of course, we can change the scales and things. So those bricks are probably a little bit too small. So we've got it set to cubic at the moment which is fine. There's your tiles down here, so you could set those to say maybe 0 0.5, not 0 0.5. That's probably too big actually. Let's try not 0 0.7, 0 0.7. Mm. 0 0.8, not 0 0.8. Yeah, probably about that. And I've got the basics of my bricks here, and then you just keep going with that. So you can do the same with the glass, you can do the same with the frame here. I'm not going to keep going because I want to cover other things as we're doing this. Um, we talked about the layer shader. Uh, the other one that you can do as well is use a filter shader, which is quite nice. So as you're building up your scene, if we jump in, say, the content browser and go grab an object, because objects are textured with materials as well, and there's ways of um, playing around with those. If we jump into plants, for example, and have a look at the different trees that come with Visualize. So, for example, this sweet birch here, this big old birch tree. It's a very big birch tree, so I'll bring it in and we'll just scale it down. So it's in the scene on the right there. Just turn it around. And what I'm going to do, I'll just turn off the lower the anti aliasing back to geometry, just so I'll render a bit quicker. And I'll turn off um, ambient occlusion 
just for speed in here, just so you can see what's going on, because I just want to focus on the tree, really. There you go. So you got the tree here, which is fine if you if you want green leaves. But what if it's autumn and you want to change that a little bit? A quick fix you can do is just jump into the material, and you can apply what's called a filter. And a filter, which is here, is a great way of taking a material inside Cinema 4D and adjusting the texture or the the image that that material is using. In this case, this leaf, and changing the color of it. And if you come down in here, you can see that it's it's gone off to find this uh, material. So rather than me damage that reference material, if just for this scene I want those leaves to be a bit brown, I can use a filter to change them. And I can do that by changing the hue or the saturation. So I just keep playing around. And now I'm looking a bit autumn-y. I can lower the, the uh, saturation a little bit, maybe darken them a little bit. And now I've got a tree that's a little more autumn in look. So there's a quick fix, just a quick material fix. So hopefully you see now, there you go, so I've got an autumn tree. I probably have to pull some leaves off as well. But I could get away with saying it's turning autumn. It's certainly better than a bright green tree if I, if I was trying to simulate uh, the winter. And of course it, you may then have stuff that you want to save as your particular content. So you can basically save anything. So if I say, you know, I'm going to use that tree an awful lot. I could save that as my own content. It's very easy to do. You just go File, Save Object Preset, give it a name. So I could say Autumn Tree. OK. And when you do that, if you go back up to where your presets are in the Content Browser, you should find you've got now, if you're in the Preset folder, a User folder. And in there, your objects come in correctly named. There's my autumn tree. So I can just bing that in like any other content. So this is a way of getting your own stuff into the content browser. And there's my autumn tree. And you can do exactly the same thing with materials as well. You know, with it, with anything with a content browser. So it, it all works really nicely. Um, another small thing, just while I remember. Just grab the tree there. Is if you've got, say for example, the color here and you had a complicated texture and you wanted to apply this material into another channel so you can do further work with it. A little simple way to do that so everything's all set up nicely is just copy the channel and then you can go in for example to Diffusion and paste the channel and then you've got it in the Diffusion so you can play around with affect the brightness over the luminance or, or whatever. Um, so there's a few things hopefully to, to get you up and running with the content um, and, and how you can change it, uh, all sorts of different stuff. Uh, hopefully that was useful to you.